This is KTN News. Right, welcome back to the show. Now, First Lady Margaret Kenyatta has cancelled the fifth edition of the Beyond Zero, Beyond Zero Marathon that was scheduled for the 12th of March this year. She stated that it has never been her intention to politicize the marathon, that this year's marathon would have been a gratitude run to thank Kenyans for walking with her in her quest for better health care for mothers and their children. Could the doctor's strike be the real reason for this cancellation? Right, we all saw that campaign on Twitter. Uh, loud and furious of angry Kenyans saying that she should focus on the issues and the issues where the healthcare system was collapsing and we should not be asked to support the government faith. Do you think that um, all that, uh, the pressure was fair for one and two, she should have succumbed to the pressure? Yeah, like I said um, last week when we discussed this issue is that for me from the word go, the timing was not right, you know, definitely because of the issues that this country is facing, you know, you know, for the mere fact that people are dying, we don't have doctors in hospitals, um, you know, we are facing, we are staring at, you know, famine. Uh, basically, the, the timing was not right. The messaging as well, was not coming out clearly and that is why I say that probably her PR team probably failed her, her communication team probably failed her because they were not telling us that you know we have bought this 47 mobile clinics now this is what we're going to do and that is what came out in the statement when she cancelled. Um, I, I, I really wish that you know her advisors would have advised her early to you know to just say this is an electioneering um, year you know we have these issues we're facing as a country um, it's not like the economy is doing very well uh, like we've been told we, the economy is doing well but I, I don't see it personally and so she the, the reaction she would have received even on online or uh, the supporters that she has could have been totally different if she said look I am actually putting this on hold you know you guys you've supported me through I now have 47 mobile clinics yeah so you know let's you know, put this on hold as we talk to the to the president but, to probably, you know. Yeah, but Wangari, maybe, maybe out of the goodness of her heart, she was trying to help the situation. Doctors, for sure, were on strike. People needed health care. People, the country needs assistance. Maybe that was her way of, 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 of giving a helping hand. Do you think we're being too hard on her? Maybe? No, I think, you know, if, she, if she, I, I agree with her not continuing it because it, she would have seemed a little bit too out of touch with what's going on. I mean, people are on strike. People have, are dying because they're not getting health care right. uh, uh, from the public facilities. Doctors are not being paid their due wages, uh, salaries. They're not getting the facilities. The infrastructure is dilapidated. So if she had run and said this thing about mobile clinics 47 for maternal health, I mean, she would have put herself in a place where she looks out of touch with what's happening on the ground. But that being said, I think her PR team, I think, could have done some something uh, with it. They could have put a spin on it. Right. Maybe she could have done something with the run that addresses the issue. I know she didn't want to politicize it, but she may didn't have to. She may not have to be so direct with uh, with her message. But maybe she could have run on her own. It's been kind of like the lone <laughs> runner just to put out a statement to say that, look, I am still for maternal health care, but there is a challenge. You know, something just well, to put a spin well, on well, it. She did say it was a gratitude run, Betty. So she was all kind of saying that she wanted to thank Kenyans. Uh, for running with her, literally, for yeah, four but, years. You know, mm -hmm. okay, and there's a problem with her, her PR team. They are unable, completely unable, to read the mood of the country. And by the way, you can do this by reading a newspaper. You can sense from the news, I'm sorry to be rude, but you know, you can actually read the county news, you can actually see the sort of uh, stories coming up concerning the doctor's strike, concerning the sort of suffering that Kenyans are undergoing, and then realize, you know what, running in March while there's a strike on is such a bad idea, she's gonna look, she's gonna look completely out of touch, you know, and by the way, her run has always been politicized, and it's in this simple manner that MOH is supposed to be providing maternal health care. That is a jubilee manifesto promise. Yeah. MOH is supposed to be provi providing maternal health care. The first lady engaging Kenyans and engaging that philanthropy is doing MOH's job right. to, some, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that already that's political. Okay, so we even if you didn't want to politicize it, it was already political because you're doing something that the government should be doing. 
Okay. But, but she's now, like, now let me go. Let me. I know you're going to no, 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 okay, no, me, no, no, no. But let me let me let it all out. <laughs> all right. I support Margaret Kenyatta's in, uh, intention. I believe that she does have this uh, the right sort of spirit yeah. behind this run. Just um, uh, uh, like Michelle Obama's desire to improve the health uh, of children in America right. through the through the uh, uh, school food programs and the uh, uh, exercise. However, in this instant, she could have wait. You know what? You could have waited for the strike to be over right or you could have said you know what i'm canceling the 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 run i wanted it to be there it was going to be gratitude but right. because of this strike yes because of this strike, i'm putting it on hold i'm putting it on hold and this is the statement that i'm sending out to the government of kenya that right. i cannot do this in a good conscience right you well know? speaking of the doctor's strike it has been 66 days too many precious lives have been lost and a national public health care system is collapsing from its very foundations and for what well for better treatment conditions in public hospitals for critical life-saving equipment for opportunities for doctors to specialize so that they can offer the highest standard of care for a bigger and better medical workforce and of course for a fair wage. Today, a group of NGOs are not raising concern over the state of health care in the country, but are blaming the media. Let's listen in. The, 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 the media is not reporting those who are now uh, getting raw deal out of the services that are currently being offered. Deaths are happening in homes. They are no longer in hospital because people do not see the reason why they should go to hospital where there's no care. Right, Betty, you spoke very emotively there. <laughs> I can see this is touching your heart and indeed it's touching the hearts of every single Kenyan because this is a crisis that is really hitting us where it hurts. It's a matter of life and death. And it's been going on, 66 days is a long time. And as you can see, the, the first lady with her marathon and other things happening in the country that are seemingly not taking cognizance of this fact. But now NGOs blaming the media. Wangari, I'll start with you. Where does the media come into uh, this doctor's uh, strike situation? in terms of making it worse? Um, I'm not quite sure how the media came into this whole uh, uh, battle, right. but I will say this. I mean, I think of it in two sides. Huh? I think, for one, um, the doctors have been played for too long. I mean, they've done, done the CBA, they've been promised, and year after year they're not getting what, what has been promised. Their, their pay in terms of salaries. I mean, they're paid... Their, their salaries are so paltry. I mean, it's shocking that they even survive uh, on that with their families. Um, but on the, by the same token, increasing salaries by 300% in one year is a very tall order. I mean, you have to cut some very serious programs in other sectors, in energy, ICT, agriculture, whatever, uh, that are very um, cr critical services to the citizens. So I think... Even as there's a lack of trust between the doctors and the government, this, I still think the only way to do it is through a phased approach and to have different stages. And if the agreements fail in the first stage, then you can, you know, um, uh, call to action. But not at the, on the fifth year is when you suddenly put down your tools. I think there's a, there's a phased way to do it. I think, Betty, you have a deeper insight into this. It Was it 300% or between one, 150 and 180? Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm a bit distracted, right. but <laughs> <laughs> but let me correct this, and this is where the media comes in. Right. You, you, it's our, it's the role of the media to give as accurate information as possible. I think in the U.S. you've seen a lot of commentary about fake news or inaccurate news. Alternative or, facts. Alternative facts. Yeah. Okay, so in the, in this particular case, concerning the doctor's strike and the collective bargaining agreement, there's been deliberate misinformation and it's been going on throughout the period of the strike. It's not 300%. It is actually between 150 and 180% uh, pay increase and that is stretched out over a period of time. Mm -hmm. In totality, the doctors are asking asking for about 8 billion. Now that sounds a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But when you consider that NHIF is a, the vehicle that's supposed to power the sort of structural and uh, health reforms that right. the CBA ha is, inclu is including, then NHIF can easily meet that shortfall. NHIS uh, in uh, projected or estimated uh, revenues are at 36 billion right. per year. 
So when you're looking at NHIF being able to bring in 36 billion, and that NHIF being used primarily and principally in public hospitals, then the government gets back its money. They are able to fund the doctors. They are able to pay them very well. Right. Okay. So when you look at it that way, and this is, I don't, uh, I don't believe that NHIF is the best system, but it's a system that we have. Right. It's a system that we can work with right. as we try and reform the se uh, healthcare sector yeah. uh, uh, incrementally over the next few years as we work towards Vision 2030. Right. I think that is the best way to go. So where did the media play the role? They they helped in pushing propaganda and misinformation. Well, I think the NGOs yes. were saying that they have been following this thing day by day, the number of deaths, the number of uh, people who are ill and can't don't want to go to hospital because they think they're going to die there. Faith, and also the issue of the 8 billion shillings, because MPs have just awarded themselves um, 3 billion, on top of the 5 billion, I believe it was. Actually, I was just going to talk about the MPs. You know, we, we live in a very funny country, by the way. MP is asking 3 billion shillings for 8 months for doing nothing. Right. You know, yes, because they're saying that, uh, you know, our contract contract expires next year, I think in March. You know, they get to 5 years. And right. so we're asking for 3 billion. Right. Speaking of lawmakers, sorry, Faith. Um, yeah. There was recent gun drama. I know this is a complete uh, segue to a different topic, but speaking of lawmakers, nominated Senator Paul Joroge was today arraigned in court and charged with the misuse of a firearm. The senator was disarmed last evening after gun drama in which he shot uh, during a standoff at a petrol station that he runs. Joroge reportedly fell out with two Vivo Energy that had appointed him as an independent retailer for the Shell Naivasha View station. Let's look at the events that unfolded yesterday at the petrol station. I have a QM here who actually goes to check whether the, the, the fuel is uh, offloaded in, in, in the right manner. But he could not be allowed to, 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 to inspect the road. Later I came to learn that uh, the, the, the fuel which is actually uh, being put in the tank was less than the order which was, than the fuel which was supposed to be supplied. In this particular station lacked working capital. Uh, uh, and when my people came in the morning when I sent them to debrand the station, because we don't allow stations to go dry, they encountered resistance. Uh, so they called me and told me they were encountering resistance. And because he's a senior person in, 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 in society, I came to cool him down and to talk to him to allow the people to continue with the work. Instead, what I was met with is gunshots. So there we have it, lawmakers behaving badly. This is just completely out of this world. But like we were saying, awarding themselves ridiculous amounts of money and then not even behaving in a way to inspire confidence, Betty. What do you think about this thing that went viral yesterday? Um, a senator drawing a gun and trying to engage in a gun battle um, in broad daylight. You know, we have had, not, he's not the only one. That's a, that's a worst part about it. Right. Uh, I mean, he's not even the only one this week. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, the problem we are having is that we, we, we have created demigods, right. okay? And and this is part of the thing that's fueling the voter apathy, by the way. You have created demigods. In, uh, in 20, uh, 2007, 70% of uh, parliament was thrown out. And, you know, we had new people come in. And they increased their salaries. And then 2013, we had 60% removed. And then new people came in. And guess what? They increased their salaries. And now they're giving themselves, you know, a, a golden... Package. Is it a golden parachute? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, and then now, you know, on top of all that arrogance and, and, and I, I think it's an illegal acquisition of money that you don't deserve or, you know, need. Um, on top of all of that arrogance, you, you know, you take your firearm and you just shoot it in the air because, you know, <laughs> yes, why not? It's the wild, wild west here, <laughs> you know, yeah, and, 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 and it's because of all this, all these powers that we seem to have given these people, right. this reluctance for us to step in, the reluctance of the, the police to deal decisively with these right. people. So, but Wangari, you, know? you are talking about us mm. deserving the leaders that we elect, but do we deserve this, surely, Wangari? Do we deserve the kind, do we anticipate what our leaders are going to do as we are voting for them? <laughs> Um, first of all, I think he's a nominated. He's a nominated senator, <laughs> yes, not elected. So uh, maybe we didn't deserve that one. Yeah. Uh, but but to the extent, I mean, I was. 
given all the antics of all the different MPs and uh, elected officials, um, this one actually shocked me. I was right. I was quite shocked at the brazen attitude because some of the others we've seen, like the guy from Nandi who was at the the toll station and was threatening, you know, that that was shocking. But Alfred, that was done. It was, yeah, yeah, it was it was video. It, someone took a video. But this one, he was sitting outside in broad daylight, right. brandishing a gun. Yes. And I was at, at the at the Polycarp Pigade. Yes. I was, oh, I was appalled <laughs> that this actually can happen in broad daylight, right. and we just. Getting, a, you know, it, it's crazy. Right. Do you think anything is going to happen to this guy? Ah, I mean, uh, personally, I, you know, I feel like a really desperate Kenyan right now because having looked at that senator, you know, just sitting there and firing, you know, and it was like it's fine, it's okay for him to do that. Why? Because, like Betty said, we've empowered them, we've given them, you know, this sort of thinking that they are very powerful and so they're going to do anything right and it's actually really it's a very it's a very bad thinking you know it's a it's a very bad thinking but i don't know what we can do as a country to change the leadership like wangari was saying we've seen mps you know um i remember alfred Keter, you know you know right. telling of guys yet these are people we've elected. Right, and I think in the clip that just played uh, both sides, the senator and Polly Kapiga, they were trying to give completely different accounts of what was happening at the scene. And something tells me that this matter might not go beyond this. But do you think we're going to see any prosecution, any jail time? MPs in committee, you know, I start believing in Kenya. <laughs> you know, we have this week, okay, we have this week um, accusations by Nelson Marwa against Governor Joho. Right. Why I, okay, and I agree with Joho on this regard, you know, and, and then I'll be told I'm, a, I'm an anti Jubilee person. Well, I agree with Joho on this regard. Just arrest him. Just, you know what? No more games. Just arrest him, throw him in jail, and then, you know, throw away the key, right. and then let his lawyers deal with it, right. okay? Um, we have a situation where whenever a, a politician or even a member of the upper uh, class right. in Kenya commits a crime or does something that is completely un unconscionable, right. nothing happens. Right. Nothing happens. So right now, I'm like, boy, Nett, you know what? This is not something about discussions. Just <laughs> throw him in jail. You know, you throw in, you, you arrested Moses Kuria and six other, no, five other people. Right. And we, we, we said we are tired of hate speech. Okay. Now let's show them we are tired of people playing with firearms, you know? Right. Well, speaking yeah. of throwing people in jail, the laws of Kenya, particularly in the particularly in the new legal dispensation ushered in by the 2010 Constitution, are far-reaching in their protections of the rights of the child, including children who are born outside of marriage. Parents are legally required to provide financially for their offspring, whether they are living together or not. While this is the best case scenario for children, does it give women opportunity to make a living from the proceeds of child support, especially when they are caring for children? from different fathers. Now you all know who I'm speaking about, but names withheld. Recent recent uh, happenings in the country to be referred to. Um, and I remember listening to radio and people were saying like, if, if as, a, as a single mother you have three different children by three different uh, men, you shouldn't count on one man to take care of the children. But my thought is, um, as you're having children, um, whether you're 10 men having children with one woman, you should take care of your children, right? And nobody, nobody should question uh, money is coming in for the children. Faith, what do you think about this? Hmm? I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, having children is not a, it's, it's not a one-man show. Right. You Takes know. two to tango. Yes, yes. Two parties. And so you know that I'm going to have a child, whether it's uh, within a marriage setting or outside of marriage. You have to provide for the child. Just the same way you're providing for your own children, right. whether you're married or not married in this, you know, right. context. So yeah, you should provide for your children whichever way. Right, and, and it's unfortunate that as a woman you give birth and you literally are left holding that baby. A man can decide to walk away. So I am all for women chasing down men and asking for money. Wangari, final thoughts? No, I, I, think, I think it's true. Um, look, when, you, when, that child, when you are conceiving that child and that child has come into this world, the responsibility, well, if you leave that child, right. the responsibility of raising that child is with the woman. And so she deserves, uh, while you're with your other family or doing other things, she's uh, bearing the... Not burden, but she has right, a task right, of raising right. this child. So, I mean, it's it's what if the money comes in, it, you you don't have to you you shouldn't really care or be so concerned about how the money is being spent because the environment in which the child lives uh, is also important. Right, right, Wangari. Sorry, we are running out of time. Betty, final thoughts? Two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds. Okay. If you have uh, three children with three different fathers, each father must provide for their child. Why is this father worried about these other children? 
um, you know, benefiting. Is this mother supposed to say, oh, I'm not going to feed you this chocolate? Right, I believe your two you seconds know, are up. Uh, cho like chocolate was a nice idea, I seeing know. as Valentine's <laughs> is coming up. Um, but on our Twitter poll, we asked you, do you uh, trust the IABC to conduct a free and fair election? On Twitter, you are split right down the middle. 50% of you don't trust the IABC, and 50% of you do trust the IBC. We thank you so much for joining us um, on location in downtown Nairobi.